Hi guys, it's another model inbox review from John here. Um, today I'm dealing with something that I've never ever done before. I'm dealing with a scale that I've never touched as in 1 100 scale. And the model subject, as you can see on the screen, is the El Frique Tricolores Fiat G91 PANs. Um, and the model subject that I'm choosing to do a review on <clears throat> is the Tamiya 1100 scale combat plane series number 10 Fiat G91. Basically this kit, I'll just go through the boxing history because there's not an awful lot in it. We'll just um, take this picture off the square, the lovely picture there, the Freca Trecolores. That was taken at RAF Green and Common during uh, the International Air Tattoo in 1981. Um, I think I might actually have been there, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll go into the open boxes now. The, and the original release of this Tamiya kit, believe it or not, was 1969. And it came out in this style boxing. And it's interesting because the box art on the original uh, boxing release has actually been re-released on their later models that are available in the shops today. But this kit was originally uh, released in 1969, which makes the kit... Um, I do believe it's 48 years old, so it's not a young, it's not a young lady at all. Um, then something very interesting happened between Tamiya and Ravel because Ravel released this kit in 1986, um, and they released it with German markings, which is, well, I suppose it ends because Germans are uh, Ravel is a German company. Um, so there we go. But it was a, uh, released in 1986 under the Ravel label, and that's the boxing for it there. Um, I quite like the boxing on the Ravel kit actually, and the model, you know, the, the actual model is a picture of the model when it's finished and built, which is quite nice. Um, then we go into the modern release boxing, and this is only the third reissue boxing of this kit. And this is how you can buy it in the shops today. This model is actually available in the shops today, along with all the other combat plane series, which um, the Fiat G91 is actually the tenth of ten kits in this range. Um, I like this range a lot. I'm going to go into the reasons why I like this range a lot as I do the review. So basically, I'm going to... Um, I'll leave you with a nice image of a German R4 and I'll just take the camera image up here a little bit so that you can uh, you can see what's going on there we go same as normal you know how it is lads do you know <clears throat> I've got a pair of scissors here so I can open the bag in a minute um, but basically here's the box this is the kit I'm reviewing this is the uh, present release I do believe there is another boxing, uh, but I'm not sure if it's available in, in uh, certain countries only. I've never seen it in England, but it's a picture of the PAN Air Freke Trecolores version, with no other image behind it. It's just it's just like a lithograph image box. We'll open the box for you here. Um, not an awful lot in the box, as you can see. You've got a bag of parts, a nice instruction leaflet, and a set of decals, and some. Hairy fairy information on the inside of the box. So we'll just put all that crap down there for us for a minute. We'll start with the instruction leaflet. The instruction leaflet is typical Tamiya. I have built quite a few Tamiya kits, and it doesn't seem to make any difference whether their kits are small, cheap, large, or expensive. The quality of the instructions is like this nicely drawn clearly played laid out the um, paint scheme is clearly drawn um, and even though they're a Japanese company although it quite was quite funny when you get some of their early kits the uh, English translation of some of their um, <clears throat> guides on the instruction leaflet was always quite funny at times I do like the way they've laid out their, their instruction leaflets. It's very nicely, clearly defined. The kit builds up in three 
steps on the instruction leaflet, as you can see, with a paint plan on the back and a decal guide on the back. There's not a huge number of decals on this kit. Um, but being 1 100th scale, you have to remember this is a smaller kit than the 1 72nd scale usual kits that you come up with. Um, <clears throat> but basically, <clears throat> you've got two different nose cone sections, but three different versions for the, for the three or four different variants of the kit that you can build from this model. You have uh, one one nose cone which is for the PAN models and the other nose cone which is for the ground attack air, frontline uh, ground attack aircraft um, and the difference you'll see them in a minute as I show you the parts it's quite a basic interior but I must state that the interior when you put it together it actually forms a proper bulkhead and it also forms a reasonable floor pan and there is enough room to put, say, a small lead weight into the nose cone to make sure that the aircraft doesn't sit on its tail. One piece wing. Uh, it actually has a jet pipe, which is more than you can say for the Airfix 72nd scale kit, and an awful lot of other Fiat G91 models that you actually come up with, you know, that you, you can get about. Um, it has two DEFA machine guns on the front here. You got to remember what you, this detail is on this kit, and when you see the parts, you'll see exactly why I'm surprised there is so much detail in this kit that there is. You've got options for undercarriage up or undercarriage down. You've got options for the air brakes to be open or open or closed, sorry, and the nose wheel obviously and all the doors. And all the doors, if you want the undercarriage to be in the open position, they all have separate parts for the doors. Um, even the nose wheel doors it actually has and this I really like because this part here is going to save you an awful lot of preparatory work prior to painting the nose wheel bay because you always have a line don't you when you put the fuselage halves together but this is going to hide all that which is fantastic um, <clears throat> undercarriage legs go in the location holes there very very straightforward and then you finish off on step 3 with the armaments fit it's basically two drop tanks and two bombs the bombs obviously go on the outer section because the inboard or pylons on the G91 were wet to receive fuel. So that's the instruction leaflet. Um, again, typical Tamiya. It's very well, very well um, printed, easy to follow, and quite a lot of information there to go through with. The next thing I want to quickly do is have a look at the decals because I keep mentioning the top four companies that have gone to town with their decals. Um, Airfix, Revell, Taleri and Tamiya. I'm going to try and get these decals out. I might have to, let's just snip this. I might have to snip this a little bit just to get it to come out. <coughs> there we go. Right. Here are the decals. Now, the decals yeah, there aren't very many of them. There's no stencils to speak of, no no steps and tiny little markings and things that you have to put all over the airframe. But you have quite a faithfully reproduced set of lines uh, for the Efreki Trekker Lorries aerobatic team version. There's markings for the Hellenic Air Force here. And I do believe there's two variants of the Italian Air Force ground attack version which you can build from this kit. So in all in all, uh, there are four variants which you can build from this kit and I think that's usually twice as many variants as you normally get in any kit up to I'd say 48 scale at least um, although most 48 scale kits usually you only get an option of two so although there aren't many decals there there's a lot of options and a lot of different versions that can be built from this very tiny model um, the register on the decals is as you'd expect from Tamiya it's absolutely spot on if I can show you them there all the discs on the inside of the round alls are perfectly in the middle the 109 there the 277s the 51s they're perfectly reproduced you can just see them there um, there is a slight sheen on the decals for the the surrounds at backing of the decals but it's no more than I would say any other decal sheet produces um, <clears throat> and to be honest with you, 
when you gloss varnish this kit prior to um, applying the decals and then you matte coat over the top, that sheen is going to disappear nice and easy. I'm just running my finger over these decals and the ridges over the decals from the backing paper is absolutely minimal. I can barely feel them. You can feel the decals when they go over your thumb like, but you, you can barely feel them. They're really, really crisp, lovely set of decals there. So really pleased with those. <coughs> I think um, I think the options that you get with this Tamiya kit is very good. Again, I must stress I've never, never, ever dealt with one one hundred scale. It's a scale that is co totally new to me. I have built a couple of one hundred forty fourth. And I find them a little bit too small. Um, and some 172nd scale kits, in some cases, can be quite large. Um, you know, when you start, start talking about aircraft like the Lancaster and the Liberator and the B-17, they can be quite large, space-consuming in your house kits. Um, and th this isn't. But this is something that I found interesting. First of all, I don't really want to take this canopy out of the bag because I want to try and keep it safe and sound for when I build this model but this canopy it's tiny right yes it, it is small but <laughs> it's clear it's crystal clear the frame on the outside of the canopy edge making the frame of the canopy is actually quite pronounced although it's not overdone so it should paint up really nice but the canopy itself is really crisp, clear, and it's it's a nice canopy. So that would denote the quality of the kit. I would say the quality of the kit is very good. We'll deal with a fuselage sprue first, because this kit comes in two sprues. First of all, the fuselage halves. As I said before, You've got um, a strange arrangement for the interior of this kit. And there are a couple of sinkholes and a couple of injection mouldings, but Tamiya, you are absolutely fantastic because they're all on the inside. You can't see anything on the outside of this kit. There's no blemishes, there's no problems. A little bit of flash here and there, but you've got to remember this mould is 48 years old. It's not a young model. It's, you know, it's getting on now. Um, but I'll be honest with you, Yes, it's a nice piece of work. So the interior there, there's your floor pan on the interior. The seat fits into the back of the bulkhead, so when the seat goes in the front of the bulkhead, you can see here, it's going to make up the rest of the floor pan. You've even got, and you can actually work with this, I don't know if you can see here, you've even got a section there which would make up an instrument panel when they're both glued together. You can actually put a piece of plastic card over the front of that and produce an instrument panel and you would see it through that cockpit, no problem whatsoever. So the fuselage, yeah, it might be small, that's my hand. The fuselage is quite small, but it's very, very faithfully reproduced. The outline of this kit is absolutely superb. I have not actually seen a more accurate G91 in any scale whatsoever. Um, and compared with the Airfix 72nd scale one, and even the Matchbox uh, G91Y, I would say that the outline of this kit is, is better. It looks more accurate. Uh, one piece fin, which is nice. Um, the other thing that caught my eye is this kit has recessed panel lines. <laughs> yeah, recessed panel lines on a kit that was moulded in 1969. That surprised me. I was expecting them to be raised. Possibly, maybe, um, it might be that Tamiya have reworked this mould and it may have had raised panel lines in the 60s. I'm not sure, but it has recessed panel lines now and they're really nice. <laughs> this kit is amazing me. Um, yeah, they're really, really nice. They're not over deep. They're just nicely done so that when you spray this model up, it will look absolutely gorgeous. I have seen a review of this model on YouTube of somebody who's done a Hellenic Air Force version. Um, the only issue I, I had with this kit, it was beautifully made and sprayed up lovely, 
but the only issue I did have with this kit is that he put the tail planes on the back of the tail on the back of the tail impenage with anhedral and the Fiat G ninety one did not have any anhedral or dihedral to the tail. Um, <clears throat> which was a shame but, but because this kit was it was really nicely made and you can see the work he put into it, it was lovely. The two separate nose cones here, you can see the two separate noses here. This one here is the ground attack variant. Um, with the because the the Fiat G ninety one was was one of the first aircraft to be permanently fixed with cameras in the nose. It had three cameras, two FLIRs, and a downward viewing IR camera, um, and they were they were permanently built into the nose. But the PAN model, which the Afreki Trekker Lorry used, obviously had the cameras removed, and the nose cone was actually smoothed down. And the Italian Air Force used the PAN nose cone on some of their trainer variants um, for ground attack without the cameras in the nose, which was very interesting. You can actually build the, uh, it was still called a PAN, the, the Fiat G91 trainer variant, without the, the cameras, was called the PAN variant. So you can still build the military PAN or the Frecker Tracker Lorry display team PAN models. So that's that sprue there. There's lots of detail uh, before I just put it down. There's lots of detail. There's pylons there. Um, there's a, a set of forward parts of the bombs, and they're the tail tail fins for the bombs. There's the pilot seat there. You can see that um, under carriage doors and closed position, some in open position. The struts, nose wheel there, and the forward nose wheel doors there which they're all faithfully reproduced. There's a couple of tangs that need re re uh, removing, but it does state that in the instruction leaflet, which is... <laughs> yes, we have got a few blobs here and there, but here's the instruction key to tell you you need to remove them. So Tammy knew they were there, and they've told you you need to remove them. So, yeah. The one-piece wing... <clears throat> I'm a sort of a fan of One Piece Wings in many ways because it saves you an awful lot of messing around. Um, the One Piece Wing, again, I'm putting my finger over the top of this wing and those lines are recessed. They're recessed panel lines. The flaps outlines are recessed. The guide lines and the access panel lines going down the length of the wing is recessed. And if I turn it over, they're recessed on the underside as well. And you actually have faithfully reproduced wheel wells. And I'm not joking, I've built the Airfix G91 R1, Italian Air Force Airfix kit from donkeys years ago. I built it recently. And the, the wheel wells on that kit are no better than this. Um, and this kit is... 30% smaller than the 72nd scale kit. So I think Tamiya's definitely one up on the airfix there. Again, you've got recessed panel lines on the tail planes, which is really nice. Little location holes there on the drop tanks. The drop tanks always have to go on the inner pylons because the G91's inner pylons were the only ones that were wet. They were the only ones that could receive fuel. The wheels there, they're tiny, but they're, they're, they're no worse than the Airfix kit's wheels. I'm really, really impressed with the level of detail on this kit. It's really good. And if anything, these wheel doors that go over the top of the wheels are actually better shaped and better moulded than the ones on the Airfix kit. And this kit came out around about the same time as the Airfix kit came out. And it's smaller. It's much smaller. So, very, very impressed with the parts on the grey sprues and very impressed with the canopy. <coughs> sorry, I've got a bit of a cold today, sorry you'll have to excuse me, but I'll put these parts back in here. Um, so that if anything comes off I don't lose any of it. I'm not expecting to anyway, but there it goes. It's a bit of a tight fit in here, isn't it? There we go. And the canopy can go in there as well, there we go. So Put all this back. Tinkles, instructions. So that's the inbox review. That's all the parts done and dusted. Before I close this video, I just want to um, 
I want to go over the technical details of this kit and the only way I can do that is to just quickly go into the data which I've recorded on here somewhere. somewhere here we go. Right, basically, <clears throat> this model review is of the Tamiya 1100 scale Fiat G91 R1 or R4. But it also covers the PAN version, which is the Alfreca Trekker Lorries aerobatic team variant. The original release date was 1968. Um, but it has been released in the 80s by Ravel with the German markings on it and then re-released in its original guise um, with an, um, an alternative variant markings for an Italian Air Force in the new 2007 release. The kit has 37 grey plastic parts on two screws, two, sorry, two sprues under transparency, making 38 parts in total. The kit measures 4 inches long, it has a three and a half inch span and it sits one and a half inches high on its undercarriage. Um, the decals are for two Italian Air Force plus the El Freca Trekker Lorry variant and one Hellenic Air Force. The variant that comes with the Hellenic Air Force in the kit was the evaluation plane that the Greek Air Force tested for a number of months um, and then opted, I believe, for an American aircraft. Um, <clears throat> But there you go. Tamiya's 1100 scale combat plane series, uh, the G91 is the tenth of ten aircraft. So you've got ten aircraft in the series, and the G91 is number ten. Um, I am interested in actually in actually getting hold of some of the other variants, some of, some of the other numbers in the combat series, because they do quite a number of interesting subjects. Uh, the first model in their range actually is the IL-28 Beagle and I think I think that would be a nice kit to build, I think it would be an interesting kit to build. First impressions, the engraved panel lines were a bit of a shock, I was not expecting that. It had good accurate outline and but I was expecting that from Tamiya to be honest with you. Tamiya is, is they like to sit themselves on the top of the tree of the model industry. The kit is simple and it's basic and it builds quick but it has beautiful mouldings and it has a good choice of parts for different variants and decals included in the kit to build them. Although the older kits, especially the Revell release, can hold a bigger price tag, can be up to about £20, some even £25, it is a good value for money kit from a range of 10 models which to be honest with you, if space is a premium in your house, the smaller the smaller range you could actually collect them all, and they wouldn't take up an awful lot of room, and they're good value for money at around about three to four pound in the shops. So I'll be looking out for a few more of these. Um, I quite fancy building two or three of the Russians. They do do uh, a couple of naval U.S. naval aircraft, and I believe they build a Lightning. Um, which are, I've always liked the Lightning as a plane. I've always fancied building one or two of them here and there. So I might look out for some of them as well. But basically, that's the Fiat G91R1. Um, very, very impressed with this release. Um, I think it would make a nice, easy kit to build. And you can try out a lot of different ideas and how you use spray paints and how to apply decals, how to use filler. I think this range of kits are ideal for doing that. Um, they're not expensive, you can mess around with them an awful lot and I do think they produce quite a nice finished product so if you fancy a Fiat G91 that doesn't take up as much room as say a 72nd scale one, go for the 1-100th, I think they're a good option so I'll be bringing a video on the, um, the review of the build on this kit when it's finished so I hope you'll look out for that and I hope you'll look out for the next video I'll bring up um, I'll see you again soon lads, bye bye